um, our topic for this video is about AM concepts. Okay, so this is an introduction to amplitude modulation. Okay, so um, for successful transmission and reception of intelligence by the use of radio, uh, by the use of radio waves, two processes are essential. So we need modulation and demodulation. So why? Okay, so our information is transported between the transmitter and the receiver in the form of A over some form of transmission medium. Okay, so our informations are called baseband information. They are in the form of voice, video, or digital signal. Okay, the, the problem is um, these original signals are often not suitable for transmission. Okay, so um, they must be transformed from their original form to a form that is more suitable for transmission. So to, to make our original or our information be transformed, so we have these two processes. So we have the modulation and the demodulation. So in the, in the modulation par, uh, part, so the voice, the video, the digital signal, um, modifies another high frequency signal. So that high frequency signal is what we call the carrier, which is usually in the form of a sine wave. Okay, so this is a process of impressing a low frequency information signals onto a high frequency carrier signal. So the aftermath or the resultant wave is what we call the modulated carrier wave and, this, and it is done at the transmitting section. So for example, um, your, your DJs, okay, so from your AM and or, or FM radio station, the speech and the music se is sent um, thousand uh, meters, okay, so thousands of kilometers away by a radio transmitter. Okay, so um, if you if if it is just your voice, okay, so it is very difficult for you to send that simple voice or a simple music over that very long place. Also, in TV broadcasting or in television, okay, so some scene in front of your television camera is sent many kilometers away going to the viewers, okay, at home. So, those watching your, your favorite um, telenovelas, okay. So, and also in telemetry, okay, so we have here, um, we have a probe. So, that probe is being sent to outer space, for example, to the moon or Venus, checking their environments, okay. So, checking what type of environment is there, um, for example, uh, um, in the moon or in Venus, for example. So, um, that probe sends information it gathered millions of kilometers going back here to earth so that our our scientists can study their environment there okay so those things are not possible if we're not going to perform this modulation process okay so afterwards we need the original signal okay so we need the 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 original voice, the original video, or the original digital D signal, and not the modulated carrier wave. So what do we do? We do the reverse process. And the reverse process is what we call the demodulation process. Okay, so the demodulation process now is the process of separating or covering the signal from the modulated carrier wave. So this is just the opposite of the modulation and it is being performed at the receiving end. So if the modulation is performed at the transmitting end, therefore the demodulation process is being um, performed at the receiving end. Okay, so the question now is, so the question now is, what is a carrier wave? Okay, so if, if the information or if the original information is in a form of your voice, in a form of your uh, video, or in a form of a, your digital signal, so what is missing is what is the carrier wave? Okay, so a carrier wave, it is a high frequency undamped. Okay, so when we say undamped, it is not varying, so it is not, uh, the amplitude is not changing, so it is constant in every way. So it is a high frequency undamped radio wave being produced by RF oscillators. Okay, so um, 
we know that oscillators are circuits that are capable of producing um, waveforms. So, since we say that carrier waves are usually in the form of a sinusoidal waveform, therefore, the type of oscillators that we are talking here are sinusoidal or what we call harmonic oscillators. So, sinusoidal or harmonic oscillators are types of oscillators that are capable of producing sinusoidal waveforms. Okay? So, your carrier wave has a constant amplitude and it travels with the velocity of light. Okay? So, our velocity of light is at 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Okay? So, they cannot produce any sound in the loudspeaker of a uh, of a receiver. So, for example, you have a radio at home that will be a receiver or you have a television receiver, for example. Um, the, the, the carrier, the carrier waveform or the carrier wave itself is inaudible. Okay? So, inaudible to the, to the viewers or to the listeners. Okay? So, because there is no information there, where is the information? The information is your low frequency signal. So when you when you listen to a radio and you tuned and you tune to a uh, to a station which is not a regular uh, radio station, you can he not hear something, but you can hear a sound, a buzzing sound like zzz. You can hear something with no information, just a buzzing sound like zzz. Or for example, you're watching a TV and and the TV and uh, and the channel that you tuned in has no information or has no show in it. So all you can see is a blank screen. Okay, so that means your carrier waveform has no information at all. Okay, so um, the output of your oscillator, of your um, radio frequency oscillator uh, is first amplified. So to make sure that, this is, that it is strong enough, so it is amplified using a power amplifier and then it is passed through an antenna. Okay, so this antenna now radiates out this high frequency electromagnetic waves into the space. Okay, so this carry, as, as the name implies, carrier, so this carrier signal, either your audio signal or your video signal or both, okay, from the transmitting station going to the receiving station. So each um, station now must produce a specific carrier frequency so that it will be brought to the output, okay, or to the receiver that will listen to that specific frequency. So, if you tune on, for example, AM, and you wanted to to, to hear a newscaster in sa Estrenta, okay, so sa Estrenta, so that is 60, 630 kilohertz, so you need to tune in to that frequency because the carrier wave brought the information signal to that specific frequency so that the listeners can hear the, the newscaster in that specific radio station, okay? Or, or for example, FM station, so that is, for example, 88.9. So that 88.9 is a certain frequency. So if you tuned in to that certain frequency, you can hear... The, the program there. You can hear the DJ there at that specific frequency. Okay? So, we have here, um, why is there a need for modulation? Okay? So, we have here, um, Three main hurdles in the process of direct transmission of audio frequency signals. So our our information is a low frequency signal. So we 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 use the term AF. So AF is for audio, okay? Audio frequency signals. So audio frequency signals are relatively short range. Okay, so they are relatively short range. Okay, so we have here, um, if everybody started transmitting these low frequency signals directly, mutual, mutual interference will render all of them ineffective because technically voice frequency falls between um, the, the audio frequency range which is 20 to 20 kilohertz. So if everybody is transmitting at that specific frequency range only, so imagine the mutual interference and and they will just interfere with each other. Why? Because the frequency is just the same. Voice frequency lies there, so everybody has the same voice frequency. Um, 
in the same range for example from 300 to 3000 uh, to 3000 kilohertz or to 3 kilohertz like that so those low frequency signals when you directly transmit them will just uh, produce mutual interference and it is very very ineffective and likewise the size of the antenna required for their efficient radiation would be very large okay so it will be very very large okay so uh, how do we do that okay so the question is um why is there a necessity for modulation? So why not? Why why still use carrier wave to carry this information from one place to another? Why not transmit signal directly? Okay, and save some bothersome. So let us just transmit your voice frequency directly. So what what does what what is the effect of this? Okay, so for efficient radiation, it says here that the minimum length of an antenna is one quarter wavelength so in our previous video we have discussed what is a wavelength okay and your wavelength is inversely proportional with your frequency okay so the lower the frequency the longer your wavelength is okay now the minimum length of an antenna um, you you will have a subject for this you have a, we will you will have a future subject for this but uh, just for uh, immediate knowledge so uh, the minimum length of an antenna is one quarter of a wavelength or that is represented by lambda over four okay so the antenna length um, uh, maybe right now you cannot appreciate this anymore because mostly it's digital already or or you're watching using the the digit box already but if you will be noticing before um, you have an antenna on the roof of your house right so so the, the antenna length okay is connected with the frequency of the signal so it is given by the relationship of the speed of light um, divided by the frequency Okay, or that is um, 3 times 10 raised to 8, um, 3 times 10 raised to 8 um, meters per second, or since it is quarter of a wavelength, if you will be dividing that into 4, that will give you 75 times 10 raised to 6, okay, in meters. So, um, how, for example, you wanted to transmit a frequency equivalent to 1000 hertz. Okay, so you wanted to transmit a frequency that is equivalent to 1000 hertz. So, um, your frequency there, so your frequency there is what? So we have here your your um the length of your antenna is equivalent to um 75 times 10 raised to 6 okay um divide by we have here one so this is supposedly meters per second and then your lambda is in terms of um second so the can the seconds will be cancelled out and of course your hertz is one one, uh, one over cycle per second okay so the, the unit for the length of antenna will be in terms of meters if you're going to divide uh if you're going to send an information which is equivalent to 1000 hertz so this is all over f so this is divided by 1000 hertz or cycles per second so therefore it that does the seconds here the cycles per second here seconds will be cancelled out so the remaining unit for the length is equivalent to 75,000 meters or this is equivalent to 75 kilometers so imagine an antenna which is 75 kilometers in length okay so it is really impractical for you to transmit a 1000 hertz information so why 1000 hertz because voice frequency lies between 300 to 3000 hertz so 1000 is uh, 1000 hertz is within that specific voice frequency or audio frequency of 20 to 20 kilohertz so if we transmit that from one place to another you will be needing an antenna with a length of 75 kilometers and that is very impractical 
Okay, so that is very, very long. So, uh, so what do we do now? The solution, okay, so the solution is modulation. Because through modulation, this enables a low frequency signal to travel very large distances through space with the help of high frequency carrier wave. Okay, so these carrier waves need reasonably uh, needs reasonably sized antennas and produce no interference with other transmitters operating in the same area. Because although we are transmitting um the same voice frequency, okay, if we will be using different carrier frequency, then your your, your information that will be um that will be transmitted may have different frequencies because although the real information lies within the same band using different carriers will make them different in frequency thus we are um we are narrowing the chances of interference and also since this carrier frequency is very very high so we use radio frequency which is very very high compared with the audio frequency its wavelength is more longer okay so imagine this is your frequency as your frequency increases your length of antenna likewise it decreases so therefore we have a uh, we have a practical okay reasonably sized antennas and the interference the problems of regarding the interference interference is very minimal okay so in radio broadcasting, in radio broadcasting class, um, this is one example of um, uh, of using modulation. Okay, so what happens here is that so radio broadcasting stations broadcast speech and music. Okay, from the studio. So, your AF signal is being translated um, into a tiny varying electrical currents, usually by using a microphone. Okay, so they make use of a uh, crystal microphone. And then you have an RF signal, okay, using an oscillator. The oscillator from a radio broadcasting, they produce their um, RF signal. So, therefore, uh, with the process of modulation, this is your low frequency voice, or this is your AF signal and then this is your carrier signal okay so it passes through a modulator so your modulator is the circuit which will combine these two signals and then the output of this modulator signal is being brought to that antenna and from that antenna it will be transmitted okay from your home okay from the for, uh, for the for, for the listeners okay so imagine yourself you have a horse okay so you're uh, you have a horse the horse is your courier uh, because if you're going to a long place a long distance place so it's very um difficult for you if you're going to walk so imagine that you have a horse the horse is your carrier and then the rider the rider is the information okay and then they will be uh, traveling together through space okay or through a certain medium and then when they when they uh when they arrive at the at the receiver end so that the rider will be will go down uh from the horse and then uh the horse and the rider again will be separated so it's like that okay so that's the concept for uh, modulation for the carrier and for the modulating signal okay so modulation is the process of combining an audio frequency af signal with a radio frequency or rf carrier wave okay so the af signal is also called your modulating wave and the resultant wave produced is called your uh, it is called your um modulated wave okay so the af or the information is called your modulating signal or modulating wave and that and the resultant of the carrier and the modulating wave is your modulated wave 
Okay, so during modulation, some characteristics of the carrier is varied in time with the modulating signal is and is accomplished by combining the two. So, for example, this is your modulator, this is your low-frequency AF signal, this is your RF signal. So, after passing through a modulator, this is now your modulated wave. Okay, so there are different methods of modulation. So, mathematical expression for a sinusoidal carrier is this one. So, you have your EC sine of omega CT plus um, phi. Okay, so uh, we can further uh, rewrite this into EC sine of 2 pi FCT. So, this omega, omega C here can also be written as 2 pi FC plus phi here. Okay, so EC is the amplitude. So, the waveforms can be varied by any of the following three factors or parameters. So, EC is the amplitude, FC is the frequency, and uh, is this alpha or phi? Here is the phase. Okay? So, there are different methods of modulation. It is on how you are going to modify or change this with respect to your um modulating signal. So, if you decided to change the EC or the amplitude, then we have an amplitude modulation. So, if you decided to change this frequency here, then we have a frequency modulation. And if we wanted to change your phase here, then we have your phase modulation. So, both your FC and phase here, we call this as your angular modulation because we are specifically changing one of them and it is between your omega ct plus phi so plus phi so they are actually related in terms of your angle so they they the two of them are called angular modulation so we have the frequency modulation and the phase modulation but if we wanted to change the amplitude ec so that is your um that is your amplitude modulation okay So, your amplitude modulation or AM concepts, um, this, the amplitude of the carrier wave is varied in proportion to the instantaneous amplitude of the information signal or AF signal. Obviously, the amplitude of the carrier wave is changed but not its frequency. Okay? So, looking at these three waveforms now, this is your low frequency signal, this is your information signal, this is your modulating signal, this is your carrier signal having a constant amplitude. Upon process of AM or amplitude modulation, you can see that the change, that the, the, the amplitude of this um, carrier wave was changed in accordance to the shape of your carry uh, of your modulating signal as you can see look at the frequency the frequency was not altered so the only thing that was changed here was the amplitude okay so the process of f of am is the function of the modulator is to mix these two waves in such a way that your a here this is your figure a is transmitted along your figure b okay so all stations broadcasting on a standard broadcast band uses AM modulation. So that, that specific band of frequency being used for AM is that 550 to 1605 kHz. So as you can see class, um, when your signal here has a positive amplitude, okay, or the highest peak value for your modulating signal that is also the time when your carrier has its maximum peak okay so when your signal has low peak value so that means also that your signal here has a low peak value so it it ha it follows the amplitude of your modulating signal okay so AM or amplitude modulation is a relatively inexpensive, low quality form of modulation that is used for commercial broadcasting of both audio and video signals. Okay, so why video signals? Um, uh, in transmitting um, 
uh, television signal, okay, or in TV broadcasting, you are transmitting two things, okay? So, you are transmitting audio at the same time, you are transmitting video, okay? And the transmission of your audio and your video signals are in separate transmitters. They just use special signals, synchronizing signals, so that when, when you receive or when you watch your TV, the, the video corresponds to the to the audio signals okay so the type of audio signal that they are transmitting is in a form of an am it is a uh, one type of am because amplitude modulation they have um different types of am so we will be discussing that um towards the continuation of our topic, okay? So, AM is also used for two-way mobile radio communications such as the citizens' band radio, okay? So, you're, you're uh, over, over like that when you when you use your walkie-talkie, for example. So, that, that, that type of modulation is, the type of modulation that is also being used for that is AM, okay? Because you are transmitting your voice from one place to, to the other so the type of modulation you use for that is also am okay so am modulators are non-linear devices so what do we mean by non-linear devices they do not just add up linearly okay so it is a non-linear device with two inputs and one output so what is your two inputs your information signal or your modulating signal your carrier signal and what is your output your output is your modulated waveform Okay, so radio frequencies are X, frequencies that are high enough, okay, um, to be efficiently radiated by an antenna and propagated through free space. Okay, so your information signal, it may be a single frequency or more likely consist of range of frequencies. Because if it is a voice, normally it is composed of a uh, different Composite, so we call this composite signals. It is composed of different frequencies Because if not you are sending a monotonic voice a single frequency voice So usually the information signal is made up of a specific frequency Range, but that range must lie bit uh, just within the uh, audio frequency range Okay, so your modulator the information acts on or modulates the RF carrier producing a modulated waveform. So, the modulated waveform from an AM modulator is often called an envelope. So, the lining that we saw uh, from the previous slide, we call that an AM envelope. Okay? So, it is the AM envelope encloses your modulated waveform. So, this is your AM envelope class. Okay? So, this is your AM envelope. So, um, conventional AM, so I have mentioned a while ago that there are different types of AM. So, the type of AM which we call con conventional AM or simply AM or the AM that we usually um, discuss is what we call the DSBFC. So, the DSBFC is what we call the double sideband full carrier. So, this double sideband full carrier is also called the conventional AM or simply AM. So, when you talk about conventional AM or simply AM, then we are referring to this double sideband full, free, full carrier. Because there is a single sideband full carrier, there is a single sideband suppressed suppress carrier. So, there are different types of AM. Although, we will be discussing that um, uh, on our next topics. Okay? So, what are the inputs for our modulator so our carrier is a sine wave so we have here your vc vc is your amplitude the same with the ec a while ago okay so we have your vc sine of 2 pi fct f is the carrier frequency okay and then we have vm vm is your is the amplitude the maximum amplitude of your carrier Okay, so uh, of your modulating frequency rather, that is sine of 2 pi FMT. FM is the modulating frequency. Okay, so this is your modulating signal and this is your carrier signal. So the AM envelope is the shape of your modulated wave. 
Okay? So, the repetition, repetition, this is repetition rate of the envelope is equal to the frequency of the modulating signal and that the shape of the envelope is identical to the shape of the modulating signal. So, look at the modulating signal and look at the envelope. Their shape is the same. Okay? So, when you send a signal, for example, the carrier is always there. So, even though you have no modulating signal, you can still receive the carrier. So, if you turn on a radio and you, you're not tuned into a specific um, radio station or TV station, so all you can hear is a buzzing sound. So, that buzzing sound is a carrier because carrier is just around the corner. So, it's, it's everywhere, okay? But once there is already a modulating signal, so this modulates your carrier frequency. And upon changing its amplitude, this is what we call an amplitude modulation. So, in this waveform now, within this envelope, lies both your carrier and your modulating signal. Okay? So, AM frequency, spectrum, and bandwidth. Okay, so we have here, the output envelope is a complex wave. So why do we say that it is a complex wave? So it is uh, upon, upon um, undergoing or upon entering the modulator, so the output envelope becomes a complex wave. That means it is made up of several components. Okay, so what are those several components? First, your output wave has a DC voltage, okay? So, it has the carrier frequency. So, the carrier frequency is always there. With or without your modulating signal, you have your carrier frequency. And then, this is the product of your modulator. We form this FC and FM, okay? FC plus FM signifying the sum. And we have your FC minus FM signifying the difference. So we have the sum and difference frequencies. Okay, so as you can see, we have the DC voltage, we have the carrier frequency, we have the, we have the sum and difference frequency, but we do not have the modulating signal alone. Okay, so the modulating signal is within the sum and the difference in frequencies. It is as still associated with your FC, although we produce FC alone or the carrier frequency alone. Okay, so the cross products are displayed, displaced from the carrier frequency by an amount equal to the modulating signal frequency. Okay, so an AM signal spectrum contains frequency components spaced from hertz on either uh, FM hertz, okay, so modulating frequency hertz on either side of the carrier. So therefore, the effect of modulation is to translate the modulating signal in the frequency domain so that it is reflected symmetrically about the carrier frequency. So symmetrically, that means it has uh, it has the same okay same amount above the carrier and it is, has the same distance below the carrier. Okay, so this is the frequency spectrum uh, of an AB, of a conventional AM or AMDSBFC. Okay, so we have here your carrier signal and then we have here your low frequency and then you have here your high frequency. So the AM spectrum extends from FC minus FM max. So what do we mean by FM max? That is the highest modulating frequency because we we uh, we mentioned a while ago that your modulating signal can may be composed of several waveforms. So several waveforms means several modulating frequency. So what we need is just the maximum value. Okay, so the AM spectrum extends from FC minus FM maximum, so it is this one, to FC plus FM maximum. Okay, so from from this one, from from the from the FC minus FM max going to the carrier frequency, we call that lower side band. So why band? Okay, why band? Because it composed of 
bands of frequency. There are different frequencies within this specific band. So, we call that as our LSB or lower side band. At the same time, we call this as our upper side band. This is the, side, the band of frequencies that extends from the carrier frequency to the sum of the carrier frequency and the maximum modulating frequency. Okay? So, upper side band consists of band of frequencies. So, group of frequencies. Okay? Um, we, we call that group of frequencies as lower side frequencies and we call that uh, band of frequencies as upper upper side band frequencies. Okay? Then we call it, when, then we determine the bandwidth. The bandwidth is from this FC from the sum of the of the carrier frequency and the maximum modulating frequency minus the difference between the carrier frequency and the maximum modulating frequency. So this is your bandwidth. Okay, so as you can see, what is the separation here? The separation here is equivalent to the maximum modulating frequency. What is the separation here? This is equivalent to the maximum modulating frequency. So therefore, the difference between the highest upper side frequency and the lower side frequency is the bandwidth or it is also two times the highest modulating signal frequency given by the formula bandwidth is equivalent to two times your modulating frequency maximum. Okay, so we have here for example, for an AM double sideband full carrier modulator with a carrier frequency equivalent to 100 kilohertz and a maximum modulating signal frequency fm max equal to 5 kilohertz we are to determine the following okay so the frequency limits the frequency limits for the upper and lower side bands we need to determine the bandwidth we need to determine an upper and lower side frequency produced when the modulating signal is a single frequency 3 kilohertz tone. So it to, uh, tone. So this is, it, it was mentioned here that this is a single frequency. So why do we have a maximum here? So maybe because the modulating frequency is made up of several frequency and it happens to be that 5 kilohertz is the highest frequency. So in this type, it is specified that this is just a single frequency, which is 3 kHz tone. So, since it is a tone, it is just composed of one frequency. Okay, unlike voice, it is composed of several frequencies. And then finally, we are to draw the output spectrum. So, we have here the solution for that. Okay, so... We have here, for the lower side band, so the lower side band extends from the difference between the carrier frequency and the maximum modulating frequency up to the carrier frequency. So the carrier frequency is 100 kilohertz and the maximum modulating frequency is 5 kilohertz. So the difference, which is 95 kilohertz, so since it is a band, it composed of a minimum and a maximum range. So, the band of frequencies that lies between 95 and 100 kilohertz, we call that as your lower sideband. Okay. Now, at the same time, the upper sideband extends from the carrier to the sum of the carrier and the modulating signal. So, the carrier is 100 kilohertz, okay, to the sum of 100 plus 5. So, we have here, this is, so this is extended from 100 kilohertz to 105 kilohertz. So, since this is a range, we consider this as a band. So, this is what we call upper side band. So, determining the bandwidth now, okay, so this is 2 times the maximum modulating frequency. So, 2 times FM, which is 5 kilohertz, that will give us a bandwidth equivalent to 10 kilohertz. Okay. So, for the third item, there is an additional modulating signal in the form of a tone. So, that tone is a single frequency having a value of 3 kilohertz. So, therefore, we will just use upper side frequency because it will be producing a 
sum and a difference. So the sum, it is not a range since it is just a single tone, a single frequency. So this is just your um, carrier frequency plus the modulating frequency, which is 3 kilohertz. So the upper side frequent the upper side frequency is equivalent to 103 kilohertz and the lower side frequency is the difference which is 97 kilohertz so if we're going to draw for that okay so this is now your bandwidth so as you can see okay we have here the courier so we have the courier the, the dc is not included because it has no frequency remember this is equivalent to zero uh, uh to, to zero hertz okay but uh, uh on our next topic we will be uh seeing where the dc component lies okay so in this bad in this frequency spectrum so we call this a frequency spectrum because what we can see is are the frequencies only and their corresponding amplitudes okay so as you can see this is your carrier it appeared at your output so the carrier which is 100 kilohertz and then from 95 to 100, this is our original band of up, uh, lower side band frequency. From 100 to 105, this is our original band of lower side band frequency. Okay, and then we have here your sum and difference caused by the single tone frequency. That is your 103 and your 97. Okay, so for now, uh, just uh, just uh, notice that uh, the carrier is the one which has the highest amplitude, okay, and then followed by the sidebands, which is um, lowering the, the amplitude as you, as you go uh, far away from the carrier. So next time, we will be discussing uh, what, are, what is the appropriate uh, amplitude for those specific um, sideband frequencies okay so as you noticed we don't have here your modulating signal so your modulating signal are the maximum 5 kilohertz and the 3 kilohertz so as you can see there is no 5 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz here what was present at the output are the sum and the difference of the carrier and the modulating signals but no modulating signal alone Okay, and at the same time, we have your carrier alone. So, those are the components or the bandwidth. So, by looking at the bandwidth now, this is your bandwidth. This is equivalent to 10 kilohertz or 2 times your 5 kilohertz. Or, another way is you subtract the upper frequency here, so which is 105 minus the lowest here which is 95 so 105 minus 100 mi minus 95 can still get you a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz okay so the extension from the lowest to the highest is your bandwidth which happens to be two times of your maximum modulating signal okay um later we will be discussing um uh, about the amplitude why, why would the amplitude um, goes down, okay, with the different frequencies? So, we will be discussing that on our next video. Okay, so we have your phaser representation of amplitude wa um, modulated wave. So, we have your phaser addition, okay. So, an AM envelope is produced from the vector addition of the carrier and the upper and lower side frequencies. So, the two side frequencies combine and produce a resultant component that combines with the carrier vector actually the three of them the carrier the the carrier the upper side band and the lower side band they all rotate in a counterclockwise manner okay however okay however as you can see the the rotation of your upper side frequency is greater or faster than your carrier at the same time your carrier is faster than your lower side frequency so what happens is that um uh the 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 upper side band frequency uh shows that it rotates counterclockwise while your lower side frequency rotates in a clockwise manner okay so the phasors for the carrier and the upper and lower side frequencies combine 
So, sometimes they add, okay? So, if they are in phase, they add up. Or, if they are out of phase, they subtract. Okay? So, we have here phase or addition producing an envelope. So, there are there is a time where we have a positive Vmax. So, positive Vmax happens, okay? So, the maximum positive amplitude of the envelope occurs when the carrier, the upper and the lower side frequencies are at their maximum positive values at the same time. So, they are in phase and their amplitudes are all in the maximum values. Vmax is equivalent to Vc plus V or the voltage of the upper side frequency plus the voltage of the lower side frequency. Then we have the lowest or the minimum positive amplitude. Okay, so the minimum positive amplitude of the envelope occurs when the carrier is at its maximum positive value at the same time and the upper and its lower side frequencies are at their maximum negative value. So, it is given as VC minus VUSF minus VLSF. So, we call this as your V minimum. So, at the end, in the envelope, we have here the V max, we have the V min, we have the negative V max, and then we have the negative V min. Okay? So, these are the conditions. Since the, the phase source are rotating clockwise and counterclockwise, so there will come a time that they are in phase and they are in their maximum or there will come a time that they are out of phase and they are in their maximum. So those are the voltages we produce. The Vmax, the Vmin, the minus Vmax, and the minus Vmin. Okay, like this one. So this is your positive Vmax. So this is your minus so, this is your positive Vmax. Okay, it happens when they are all in phase and they are all in their man, ma, positive value. So, this is your positive Vmin. It happens when uh, when you have the maximum carrier and but reverse polarity of the upper and lower sideband frequency. So, this is your positive Vmax. This is your um, positive Vmin. This is your negative Vmin and this is your negative Vmax. And these are the conditions of the phasors. Okay, so your phasor addition producing the AM envelope. So later on when we discuss about the maximum and the minimum, you know why they happen. Okay, because of the phasors. So this is the relationship between the time and frequency domains. So the, the spectrum that we have discussed in our example, that is in the frequency domain. So when we say frequency domain, we can see the the we can see the positive we, we can see the amplitude of the frequency uh, of the signal at the same time we can see its frequency so we this is your frequency domain so we have here your lower side band you have here your carrier and you have here your module uh, your upper side band so for the time domain we can see them in their waveforms. So, this is the modulating signal. This is your carrier signal. And then the two signals that were produced. This is the lower sideband and this is the upper sideband. Okay. So, in time domain, we can see this AM envelope. And in frequency domain, all we can see is the carrier plus its two side, plus the two sidebands. Okay. So, um, it is also possible um, when your carrier in the form of a sine wave is being modulated by a square or pulse waveform. Okay, so this is a frequency spectrum of an AM signal modulated by a square wave. So, it is said in your Fourier analysis that a square wave, that a rectangular wave, that a pulse, that a triangular or a sawtooth or a uh, distorted sinusoidal waveform are just composed of, are called composite signals. So, what do we mean by composite signals? They are composed of different uh, signals having different frequencies. So, by Fourier transform, you can separate their 
frequencies. Okay? So, for a square wave, okay, a square wave is usually composed of the fundamental frequency plus their odd harmonics. So, for example, this is a frequency spectrum of an AM signal modulated by a square wave. So, using Fourier, a square wave is composed of a fundamental frequency and odd harmonics. So, what do we mean by har uh, odd harmonics? You have the third harmonic, you have the fifth harmonic, you have the seventh harmonic, and so on. Okay, however, as you can see, these harmonics are the higher its frequency, the lower its amplitude, making some of the amplitudes. Actually, it's, it's, it's infinite, okay? But the amplitude becomes um, insignificant. Therefore, we can only choose the, the frequencies having a significant amplitude. So, we have here your third, your fourth, and your seventh. So, what is the implication, okay, compared with a sinusoidal waveform? So, with the sinusoidal waveform, um, the, the bandwidth is much narrower, okay? So, if you have a square wave and it is composed of several harmonics frequency, the, the tendency is for your bandwidth to expand or to become wider. Because in order for you, it says here, in order for a square wave to be transmitted and faithfully received without distortion or degradation, all the most significant sidebands must be passed by the antennas and the transmitting and receiving circuits. And that means it is a wider bandwidth because you have to include all of the harmonic frequency. So that is the significance if you will be modulating your carrier waveform with a square wave or a pulse. Okay, so we call that pulse modulation. Anyway, pulse modulation will be discussed further in your um, digital comms, digicoms. So, amplitude modulation of a sine wave carrier by a pulse or rectangular wave, we call this as amplitude shift keying. Okay, as you can see, the, the carrier wave is still a sine wave. Okay, so um, it's, it changes with the value of your amplitude of your um, pulse okay so this is this shows a uh, an amplitude modulation of 50 percent and this shows an amplitude modulation of 100 percent so that 50 percent and 100 percent is your coefficient of modulation or modulation coefficient so we will be discussing that on our next topic Okay, so I guess that is your last slide. So we call this amplitude shift keying. So this is also a type of AM, but it is uh, under um, digital communications already because um, we use a carrier or we wanted to transmit a digital signal already. So this is used in data communication when binary information is to be transmitted. Okay, so um, that's it for the introduction of AM. So um, we will just continue for the AM calculations like the modulation coefficient, the voltage distribution, the power distribution, the current distribution for, a, for an amplitude modulation. Okay, so thank you for listening and don't forget to like, okay, don't forget to like our videos. Okay, so thank you very much and God bless.